Find the maximum area of a triangle inscribed in a semicircle of diameter 40. Use the diagram below to help you. Okay. Can do. If this triangle has vertices A, B, and C, then it has sides A. Its hypotenuse is B, which is a little annoying if you're used to the Pythagorean theorem in its standard form, but we can deal with it. No matter where this triangle is, as they point out here, if it's inscribed in a semicircle, it will always be a right triangle. And if it's always a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem always holds. And that means we can say a squared plus c squared equals 40 squared. And 40 squared is 1,600. Let's get that in there. So we have that, and what we're trying to optimize is the area of this triangle, and the area for any triangle is one-half base times height. Now, for the base and height of this, uh, you kind of have to tilt your head to the side a little bit. These, This A and C are what I would consider the base and the height, or C can be the base and A can be the height, whatever. The area is going to be one-half AC, and that's what we're trying to maximize. So we want to take a derivative for this and set it equal to zero, and we get the usual problem where there's two variables. And this thing can probably help us, but, uh, well, buckle up. This isn't as nice a substitution as we've been getting before. If I solve this for c, let's say, take a squared to the other side, I get c squared equals 1600 minus a squared, and then square root, c is root 1600 minus a squared. Now, if you're a good details person, you might be worried about the lack of a plus or minus on this, but c is the length of a triangle side, so it can't really be negative anyway. So yes, I stand by this root. It's okay to just consider the positive value here. So we can take this c and substitute it in over here. Anywhere where there's a c, I'm going to put root 1600 minus a squared instead. A equals one half a root 1600 minus a squared. You know what? Instead of a square root, because a derivative's coming up, I'm going to write this as 1600 minus a squared to the half power. And now we get to take the derivative of that, which is going to sting a little, but we can do it. It's a product. It consists of one-half a times blah 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 to the one-half, and so we have to do first d second plus second d first to get our derivative, and then we have to clean it up, and when we're done we'll solve it. We'll find its critical values. So away we go. First, derivative of second would be one-half 1600 minus a squared to the minus one-half, and then the chain rule kicks in here and says do the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 1600 is 0. The derivative of minus a squared is minus 2a. So that's first d second. Then we get second. I'm not going to have enough space. New line. I like to do them on one line, but it's just not going to happen here. Second. And the derivative of the first piece is simply 1 half. And there should be a plus in there to tie those together. All right, well, this is in desperate need of some cleaning up, and there isn't a huge amount we can do with it, but here I've got a 1 half, and over here I have a 2. Those will cancel. Uh, I can combine these a's. That'll help ever so slightly. Let's do that and see what happens. Area equals... So we have a negative and a one-half. We have an a and another a, that's a squared. And then we have 1600 minus a squared to the minus one-half. For the second term, we have one-half 1600 minus a squared to the positive one-half. Alright. 
common factors are a good thing to look for when you do a derivative like this. There tend to be a bunch. In this case, I see that both of these have a factor of 1 half, and they both contain 1600 minus a squared. The lowest power of the 1600 minus a squared is minus 1 half, so that's what I'm going to pull out. I'm a little tempted to pull out a negative sign too. In fact, I think I will. Take out minus 1 half and also 1600 minus a squared to the power of minus 1 half. So, minus 1 half divided by minus 1 half, gone. a squared, none of that comes out, so we're left with a squared. 1600 minus a squared to the minus 1 half, we factored out exactly that, so it's all gone. From the first term, all that remains is a squared. From the second term, 1 half divided by minus 1 half is minus 1. And then we get 1600 minus a squared to the power of 1 half minus negative 1 half, which is the first power. You could write a 1 here if you wanted, I'm not going to. And so from that we get minus 1 half. 1600 minus a squared to the minus one half. And in here we get minus 60 a squared minus negative a squared. That's 2a squared minus 1600. And one more rewrite to make this look a little nicer. I'm going to turn it into a big rational expression. We have minus 1 in the numerator, we have 2 in the denominator. This is to the minus one half, which means it's in the denominator and it's a square root. This is in the numerator. 2a squared minus 1600. And we want to know where that equals zero. If you look at the denominator, incidentally, you'll find this thing goes undefined when a is 40, and that makes sense because the diameter of this circle is 40. If you try to make one of these sides 40, it means you're making a triangle where the first side reaches over to this corner, and then there's no room for the second side to exist, so it makes sense that the area function would kind of malfunction there. But for points where it's actually defined and equals 0, well, that means in the numerator either negative 1 equals 0, which isn't happening, or, here's the good part, 2a squared minus 1600 equals 0. 2a squared minus 1600 equals 0. Uh, take the 1600 over. 2a squared equals 1600. Divide by 2. And square root, I feel like that's going to be 28.3, the square root of 800. So that's our side A. And for side C, well, we have a function here that enables us to find it. It'll be 1600 minus 28.3 squared. If you run that, you should find that C is also 28.3. So our optimal triangle, it turns out, is an isosceles triangle with its point dead center. You might remember from previous examples, I said that generally your optimal shapes are balanced shapes, ones that have symmetry in them. and it happened again here. The triangle that covers the most area is one where the two sides are of equal length and this point is centered in the circle. So those are our two side lengths and the maximum area that they produce, here's our area formula up here, will be one half times a, which is, it's technically root 800 in decimal form, it's 28.3, root 800 again, and so we get a maximal area of 400 centimeters squared. Whew. Derivatives don't, don't get a lot worse than this. If you can handle this one, you can handle anything.